Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Ravarnos. In today's video, we'll be talking about regularization. We'll be talking about lasso regression and ridge regression. And so we're going to dive right in. But before that, let's talk about the agenda for today's video. We'll start our discussion by talking about what is regularization. We'll give you a quick recap of linear regression. Then we'll talk about ridge regression and then lasso regression. I'll show you how you can implement a lasso and a ridge regression in Python using scikit-learn. And then I'll show you when you can use a lasso or ridge regression. So let's dive right into talking about what is regularization. Regularization is a method of reducing your chances of overfitting your model. Ridge regression and lasso regression are two potential ways you can take a regression model and eliminate or reduce overfitting. Regularization does this by adding additional constraints to the model, which we'll talk about later in the video. Remember, overfitting is essentially when your model starts to interpret noise in your training data as signal, and therefore it does not generalize well. Lasso and retrogression, or regularization, can help you reduce the chances of that happening and improve your overall performance on testing data. Now let's do a quick recap of linear regression. Imagine we have a data set that has age and income, and ultimately what we want to do is use someone's age to predict their income. So we have age on the x-axis and income on the y-axis. So in this case, age is our independent variable and income is our dependent variable. And essentially what we're trying to do is fit a line through our data that minimizes the sum of squared errors. And so our model has to learn the slope and the intercept of our line that minimizes the sum of squared errors. And remember, the errors or residuals are the difference between the predicted value and the actual value from our training data. That's essentially what we'll minimize when fitting our line. And so when we fit a line, it might look something like this. And we can use this line to make predictions. So let's say we have in red here a point from our testing data set, and we would like to use this person's age to predict their income. Well, since we know what their age is, we will simply go to the point on the line corresponding to that age, and that would be the predicted value. So this blue triangle here would be the predicted value. And the difference between this red circle and the blue triangle would be the error, or the difference between our actual and predicted value. So now let's shift this discussion to start talking about regularization. We'll talk about ridge regression first. But it's important to remember that a linear regression fits the line y equals mx plus b, whereas y will be your predicted value, m is the slope or your coefficient, and b is the intercept. And the ridge regression uses the same ordinary least squares method, but with an additional constraint. The additional constraint is that ridge regression chooses coefficients that fit the data well, but also chooses the smallest coefficients possible. In other words, the slope or coefficient of every independent variable should be as close to zero as possible. Ridge regression uses the alpha symbol to denote the regularization parameter. Alpha can be any positive integer. Ridge regression is also called L2 regularization. Increasing alpha pushes the coefficients closer to zero and an alpha of zero means the model is the same as a regular ordinary least squares linear regression. If you're not familiar with linear regression, we also have a whole video on that that goes more in depth, so you can go check that out. If you need to know which alpha value you can choose, you can experiment with different values of alpha and see which one gives you the highest R squared or adjusted R squared value. Now let's talk about L1 regularization, also known as lasso regression. An alternative to ridge regression is lasso regression. Lasso regression differs from ridge regression in that ridge regression pushes coefficients closer to zero. Lasso regression pushes coefficients exactly to zero. When the coefficient is pushed to zero, that independent variable no longer has any impact on your model. This can show you which variables should be in your model. Lasso also has a regularization parameter called alpha. The higher the alpha, the more variables are pushed to zero. An alpha of zero is the same as not having regularization at all. 
You should choose your alpha by experimenting with different values of alpha and seeing which one gives you the highest R squared or adjusted R squared value. So now I'll show you how you can implement a last zone of ridge regression in Python. So first we'll start with our import statements. We'll import pandas and we'll use the alias PD for that. We'll import pandas so, and we'll use that to import our data frame from sklearn linear model we will import a lasso then we can copy this line and paste it beneath it and just change that to ridge because we'll be importing lasso and ridge then we can paste it again but this time instead of importing from linear model we'll import from model underscore selection and import train test split because we'll be train test splitting our data so you can run that the next thing we'll do is I will import the data so I'll use data import we'll use the read CSV function from pandas and I'll be using some mock income data and this data is not real data it's fictitious data and so we're not going to worry too much about the performance metrics later in the video I'm just showing you this so you can get a feel for how to implement some of these algorithms in Python and sklearn so we'll run that to import our data and we'll just take a look at our data and see what fields we have so once again we just have some mock data that just has you know the years of experience and then we have some binary variables indicating what kind of degree this person has their age and our income which will be our target or dependent variable so let's go ahead and get our independent variables and you'll need a double set of brackets for this i'll actually make sure you have data on the outside because we'll be subsetting our data frame and for our independent variables we'll be using experience if they have a bachelor's degree masters PhD and age and then for our target variable we'll be using income so then once you run that now we can actually train test split our data so we can do x train x test y train and y test we'll set that equal to train test split and we'll pass in our capital X and capital Y which is our independent and dependent variables so we can run that and now let's just look at some of our training data so you can see it's just a data frame with our training data in it and that looks about what we were expecting so that's good and now let's go ahead and actually build our model we'll start with the uh, ridge model so we'll say ridge model equals ridge and we can set the alpha to any positive number we'll set it equal to one which i believe is also the default and then we'll fit x train and y train then we can go ahead and run that and then we'll use the score function to see how does our model do on the testing data and you can see we have an r squared value of about 71 percent which is actually a pretty good model so now let's do the same thing but we'll use a lasso model and the code for that is actually very similar but instead of saying ridge we'll just replace that with lasso so I'll just cut copy paste we'll use the same alpha for now and then we can copy this also and just change that to lasso model and we can see our ridge model is giving us much better performance than our lasso model if you're unsure which model you can use you can play around with using both and also experiment with different alpha values and see which one gives you the best performance when you have a lot of data points meaning rows of data regularization actually becomes less important because your model will have a lot of data and will be able to learn how to generalize well however if you have a lot of variables you may want to use the lasso regression to see which ones affect the dependent variable the most Lasso is easier to interpret than ridge because it reduces the amount of variables in your model. You can also use scikit-learn's ElasticNet class, which combines both lasso and ridge, but then you have two parameters to adjust. If you'd like to see us make a video on ElasticNet, then leave a comment and be sure to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss that upload. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. When you subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. And also comment saying you subscribe. And I'll try to like or heart all the comments. We have a machine learning series on our page where you can check out other videos in our machine learning series. And we also have a lot of videos coming in the future about programming in Python, machine learning, artificial intelligence, 
cloud computing and Amazon Web Services, and physical computing using Raspberry Pis. So we have a lot of great tech content coming in the future. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.